Since I'm in the process of tidying up the heater system on the moulding machine, I thought I may as well make a distribution board for the thermocouples, which are currently kind of spliced in. There's a 12-way ribbon cable which goes back to the control cabinet, and I've only got a 40-way IDC header, but it will suffice. And then at the other end I've just got some screw-down terminal blocks to take the um, thermocouple leads in. So all I've got to do is just link the traces uh, and cut it out on the CNC machine. Uh, one issue is my machine only goes up to 2160 RPM, I think it is, and typically you want to be going a lot faster than that if you're trying to cut out very, very fine uh, traces on something, but I've never really had a major issue with it, even though it is quite slow. That's a, a very early board I did, which was using some rather wide separation between the pads, uh, and I found that doesn't work too well because the solder just goes everywhere. I've uh, improved things slightly since then. This is a little amplifier circuit, which has got much finer traces. I think this one was uh, a pulse width modulation controller for something. Again, the, the uh, cuts between the tracks are probably about 200 microns. Uh, this was a programming board for some 80 tiny microcontrollers. Again, fairly small separation. And these are some circuit boards I did not too long ago, uh, which were for a Scouts event to demonstrate various electronic principles. So there's a rather liberal dollop of uh, adhesive epoxy on the back of these just to give them a little bit of protection. But again, this is done with fairly narrow traces uh, and all of that on a pretty slow spindle. So it can be done and I'm going to do it on this board and we shall have a look at the results at the end and see just how good they actually are. tried lots of different cutters for doing circuit boards. This is a standard one millimeter ball nose cutter. I think you pay about ten pounds for these uh, carbide uh, and they work pretty well. They cut pretty much any material but being a one millimeter tip uh, it's not great for really fine traces but it's pretty solid and robust. I also use these dental burrs because these are quite cheap. You can pick up a pack of five good quality carbide dental burrs for less than a tenner. Uh, this one here is uh, a plain end but it is uh, cutting on the end so you can actually plunge in these and I've done a lot of work in aluminium with these bits uh, and they're, they're pretty good to be honest. The ball nose ones you can get these in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. The, the tip on these tends to wear out so uh, I don't use those a great deal but uh, the flat nose ones uh, they're pretty good actually. Uh, I've also played around with these little engraving bits which are readily available if you check eBay you'll see these come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, this one I think is a 0.2 mil at the end and uh, I think it's a 15 or 20 degree taper. To be honest I think probably something a bit wider at the tip and maybe a slightly uh, slightly wider taper on, on the thing would be better because I have broken chipped the tips off some of these but they're quite cheap, they're only a pound or so each but I've had pretty good results doing circuit boards you can get really really fine traces with these so this is uh, going to be my weapon of choice for the board that I need to do today Right, this is basically what we've got it's a couple of six way ribbon cables coming into a 20 way IDC header because I haven't got anything smaller and that will go on to a 40 way IDC socket again because I haven't got anything smaller and then 12 of these pins will simply break out over to this uh, screw down terminal block for the thermocouples. So these are all the pins and the connections between them and here I've just gone around those lines with a half millimeter contour and uh, made a couple of adjustments here and here just so that I can get this trace going through the pins and these are the drill hole locations 0.8 for the IDC header and one millimeter for the screw down terminals well a good thing about machining is we don't need the dreaded ferric chloride it's a fairly clean process but um, downside to that is you don't get rid of all the copper uh, you've only got the cuts between the tracks, so it's fairly easy to bridge them when you're soldering if you're not careful, but it's just uh, a case of mining what you're doing when you're soldering the things together at the end. The other advantages to doing it this way is obviously we can drill the holes while the board is in place, so there's no secondary process there. Uh, we can also panelise the board out to any custom shape that we need, and if you need a double-sided board, well, once you've got a few holes, you can use those to reference. Uh, and do the other side and that's uh, pretty accurate. So 
So uh, on the whole, I think it's you know it, it's as good at least compared to etching boards. I'd say possibly slightly better in some respects. We do have to be a little bit careful that the board is flat because it's only about 50 microns deep on the copper so we need to be going a little bit deeper than that. I'm going to try about 200 I think on this occasion. don't want to go too deep because it's putting a lot of pressure on the very fine tip. Uh, we also need to block it up obviously to avoid drilling through into the base plate. And the other critical thing that I need to get right is I've got to squint at this and make sure this tip is running absolutely true. If there's any slight wiggling on that end tip it's just going to snag and, and chip that off uh, pretty quickly so a little bit of setting up but once that's done it's pretty straightforward the, uh, the machine does all the hard work After a little bit of a scrub, here's the finished board. And everything looks a little bit too shiny, but uh, here we go. If we bring it up a bit, you should be able to see that all the holes are exactly where we want them. Two different sizes because the, the pins are slightly different. And if you look very carefully down here, you can see where I've had to take a couple of tracks between the pins. So I've had to modify the uh, pad spacing very slightly on those. but Apart from that, that looks like a pretty good board, so I now just need to solder that up and we should have our connector block for the thermocouples. And here's the finished board in situ in a rather dodgy wooden enclosure, could have done with a 3D printer for this, but uh, I've got some strain reliefs here holding the ribbon cables in and the thermocouples, so with a bit of luck that will make it a lot easier in future because these things do die fairly frequently, but for now I'll call that job done.